Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve in terms of uh, they're taking all kinds of drastic actions. Uh, as you said earlier, they've pumped stock prices back up um, and, uh, and you don't think that that rally will last, but just how do you think about the actions they've taken and should they have done something differently uh, or do they have another option even though we don't like what they've done? Um, you know, there's a million metaphors out there now, some of which were one point were original. Uh, the Fed's actions have not been particularly good in my opinion since Greenspan, uh, since Greenspan started. So, you know, for Greenspan to bail out the 87 crash in, in retrospect, I think looks kind of stupid. Like that crash should have been a sort of a yeah wake up you you can't just pump markets and then and then to, and and you know did he actually do anything that would save it besides some psychological ploy probably not um, and and he pretended to be you know uh, highly conservative but every time there was a crisis he jumped in um, I don't criticize him for the LTCM bailout bailout because it wasn't him he he got the players together and said, you guys got to write some checks. I, again, the friend of Goldman, I said, what's going to stop you guys from screwing up again? And he said, nothing. And uh, so Greenspan uh, reached a point where he started to believe his own press agent. He got very narcissistic. He, uh, he, he really did start to believe he was God. And so, uh, uh, so he went out on a high and he engineered it. And we had a lot of room because we, we came from a, interest rates of 16% down. He got to ride that wave. He got to ride the greatest bull market bonds in, in the 20th century. And, and that makes him look real good. So then Bernanke takes over and Bernanke got handed a loser. And, uh, and he's an academic, so he had all these theoretical approaches. Um, to his credit, he, he went further outside the box than I think anyone could possibly go outside the box. Uh, I don't think Bernanke's public presentations of what happened in the depression are correct. I don't know whether, whether he doesn't understand as I, as I understand it or whether he just is willing to lie. Um, I think it must be the latter, but he blames, he blames Fed actions in the thirties that caused the depression. And in my opinion, it was very clearly Fed mistakes in the twenties that caused the depression. It might've been Fed action in the thirties that failed to save the day, but you, you, all you need to do, you want to, you want to know how, you want to see the boom bust cycle, the best boom bust cycle you ever see. Boot up a plot of the Dow from 1900 to 1940, and what you'll see is you'll see the boom bust cycle. It goes up and then it comes down and then it recovers. You can draw a line right through the boom and the bust, and it's this beautiful sort of slow methodical dependence. And uh, and uh, I got to get my phone to stop ringing. Uh, it's one of my um, buddies. Um, and, and so Bernanke claims it was the 30s, it was the 20s. There was all sorts of, they, they, lowered, they lowered reserve requirements, they lowered interest rates, they, they were trying, one of the claims is they're trying to get gold to shove back to England after World War I and stuff like that, but they, they blew a gigantic bubble. And it wasn't just an equity bubble, it was a, it was a credit bubble, it was a consumer credit bubble. So, uh, so the, 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 the depression was a beautiful example of a, of a purging of, of the excesses of the 20s, the roaring 20s. Um, so Green, Bernanke professes not to understand that, in my opinion. Um, and same with Friedman, for that matter. I, these guys, I, I think they swill their own Kool-Aid. They drink their own piss. Um, and um, Volcker is a hero, but I don't view him as so altruistic. I think Volcker recognized what the system needed. So, so all these guys are in charge of making sure the banks are fine, right? That's it, that's it. The banks hold all the money, they make all the money, they create all the money, they run the world. There's, there's no alternative model that makes sense to me, right? You can have presidents of countries, they don't care. They will pick the president if they have to, right? As, as, as who has it said that? Uh, Dudley last year said that if we have to, we worry about who's president. Um, but so Volcker recognized that what the system needed was a purge. So when Volcker hiked up the interest rates to, 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 to put a lid on inflation expectations, um, and I've had central bankers tell me that that caused inflation, and I've been trying to wrap my brain around that one. Um, but then what happened is he started to bring them back down again. 
and 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 he he started apparently sat the big bankers down and said, "You guys got to behave yourself. We're out of control here." And the bankers didn't listen to him, and so he jammed them back up again. And 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 so he had to show the banking system that he was dead serious, and that seemed to break the fever. So then Volcker set the stage for Greenspan to have a party. So then you go past, let me jump back to Bernanke and, and he gets uh, credit for saving the world. Um, he saved the world from a raging inferno that was the creation of the Fed, in my opinion. So at some point, it's like giving him credit for stop beating his wife. I, I, I don't, it's, you know, the arsonist, fireman, fighter, you know, firefighter combo. Um, it, the, the crack whore who keeps getting crack. And, and so at some point, you have to purge the system. And Volcker recognized, he was the last one to recognize that. And ever since, ever since then, we've had Fed chairs who, who, were, uh, who were basically saying, not on my watch, just not on my watch. So Yellen sat there treading water best I can tell. She didn't do squat. Um, you know, she started hiking rates from what, zero. Um, and so she was just following Bernanke's cue. I don't think she knew anything. Um, long comes Powell, who looked like maybe he gets it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the markets drop 18% or something, and, and, and Manukin and Powell, you know, established the Powell put. Um, it was also, you know, it was trouble in the leverage loan market. So they were actually more worried about that. But the, the bottom line is that they're never willing to let someone projectile vomit. They're just never willing to let this and say, sorry, guys, you screwed the pooch. The CEO screwed the pooch. Now we got to live with it. They, they, and therefore, now we have bigger and bigger problems. So I blame them. And the fact that there's an even bigger problem, COVID was unanticipatable. But we'd be a lot better off if we didn't go into it with the world's biggest, historically biggest corporate credit bubble of all time. And so if you look at the bailouts, buried in there, that $6 trillion is a lot of money to deal with corporate credit. And if there wasn't a corporate credit bubble, that wouldn't have to exist. Well, who's holding all the corporate <laughs> credit, right? It's the pensioners. Right. That's the problem. Right, but also what to, so what does that do? So what it does, it gives people a false sense of wealth. So if, uh, if, if you perceive you're rich, and I don't really wanna go here, but let's say you've got a gazillion dollars worth of Bitcoin, it alters your thinking. So, so I'm sure you own a lot of Bitcoin. There's no way you don't own a lot of Bitcoin. Um, the perception of wealth alters your thinking. If Bitcoin is legit, um, it's a legitimate altering of your thinking. If Bitcoin turns out to be what its detractors think it is, then, then you will have made personal decisions that were monstrously bad, probably. Now, once you get a bunch of money, it's really hard to not drop your guard. It's really hard to not say, well, you know, I can afford that boat now. I can afford a bigger house now. And, and so the boomers are all being handed these inflated assets now. And they're saying, you know, at one point they thought they'd never retire. Now they're saying, you know, now I can afford to retire. Well, watch, you retire, they're going to throw a toaster oven in the pool. You are going to die. And so, so, so it's, the, it's the false read that everyone's being given by the perception that the corporate debt problem isn't a problem. It is a problem. And, and you can have a global debt problem. It is a problem. And if you want to know how to create a global debt problem, let's, let's do a Gedanken experiment. Let's say every country, they get together at Davos, they say, you know what? We just should give everyone free health care. Just everyone, just everyone. By the way, we should promise all the retirements and everything. They'll walk out of there. Everyone will perceive they're stinking rich now. And they will have done nothing to improve our ability to create wealth. Not one shred of what they just decided increases our ability to create wealth. And therefore, that's a global debt problem. Yeah, 